Hello everyone, welcome to Clancy's Do My Good Day podcast. I know guys, I take way too long to come back to you. Uh, the last time I saw you, well, I kind of like was venting on many things that are going on in South Africa. And I have an update for you of everything that has been transpiring since the last time we saw each other. Thank you so much guys for continuously supporting the channel. I read each and every one of your comments and I appreciate them. And those that of course would always support evil, that is who you are and there's nothing I can do about it to change it. Except to say, you need to go fix your home, period. They know who they are, the people that I am talking about. Anyways, guys, let's talk about the changes. Maybe I need to start from the beginning as to what actually really happened in South Africa that ended with South Africans up in arms and starting to defend our country, myself included, where I even suspended some few principles and, and what we would call missions that I think would help us as Africans together with the African diaspora to come together and bridge the gap that was created by colonizers and uh, uh, transatlantic slave trade, etc. and so on. So some of these things are parked just for a while until we fix the situation that is going on currently. One thing that you need to know about South Africans, I, I think South Africans are not the most confrontational people. We, we take long to get angry. Uh, but once we get angry, we take action because we've had enough of being patient, uh, exercising Ubuntu, which now South Africans are beginning to say, maybe we are being paralyzed and uh, also uh, put in a situation that we don't like because of our Ubuntu. As you would know about South Africans, South Africans have an inherent um thing called ubuntu i'm not gonna explain this whole thing if you know what ubuntu is and um, perhaps in my next video i might actually give you a definition it's more about kindness about empathy sympathy and as well welcoming to strangers so as i've said before when 1994 hit apartheid was over and south africa went into democracy and our bodies for some reason got filled with people that came for greener pastures or they saw opportunities because South Africa, as some would say, we were newly independent when we actually been independent since 1910 and we became a republic in 1910. But anyways, that's another day for another history uh, video. So now I want to talk about what actually triggered everything. There was this girl called Chidema Vanessa Argentina. Now, purportedly, this girl was born in South Africa, raised in South Africa by a Nigerian father, as well as what they said to us was a South African Zulu woman who was married to this Nigerian man. Now, the problem was South Africans are very, very protective and jealously defend our identity, our culture, as well as our diversity as South Africans. We are duped the Rainbow Nation because you will find all kinds of people in our country. And one of those people, some American founded or Americans founded offensive uh, to call this particular group of people a certain uh, word. Well, it's a fact, it's South Africa, it's not America that has a certain history with that particular word. Uh, but anyways, I believe that we were able to educate those African Americans who took offense and said, listen, that's your history in our country. These people are a part of the nation and this is how they are identified. Not necessarily black, even though they have a black in them, but there's a whole other diversity within them that makes them this particular word, which I'm not going to mention and start a whole new debate on this channel. So this particular girl called Vanessa Argentina, there was a Miss South Africa pageant that was going to be held. In fact, it, it's held and a winner has been declared uh, in August of 2024. Now, South African citizens were like, wait a minute, uh, excuse me, what the girl's name again? 
Vene what's her name? Uh, Chidima. First of all, we've never had a Chidima in a South African identity across the board. Whether you are white, whether you were Indian, whether you are black, or whether you were a colored person, or even a South African Chinese. It's something that some people actually don't know that South Africa even has south african chinese and they've been in south africa for at least 350 years but yeah, it's something uh, else uh, that's another video for another day so uh there's no chidima and then vanessa yeah we do have vanessa's in our south african names and then onwe n never there's never been an onwe in our names across the board and then the worst part is the surname because South Africans, especially if you are black and Zulu, and I know that other tribes as well do have the same thing called name praises. I'm Dumagude. I'm not just Dumagude. I am also Shange, Pangandawo, Ndima, Nyawo. And all this is what you call praise names. And then back in the day when somebody comes to visit me outside of my gate, before I uh, invite them into my yard, they'll have to sing my uh, surname praises. And same thing if I go to another man's home, I have to sing their clan name uh, praises before I'm invited into the yard. If you're also going to pay Lobola in South Africa, you still have to do that to for the gates to be open for you by the bride's family before you go pay Lobola. To this very day, that happens. So now, what is an Argentina? Um, I know I'm not uh, pronouncing it pro properly, but it's spelled A D E T uh, H C I N A. There's no such a name in South Africa amongst black people because Chidima is a black black person born of two black parents. All right. So South Africans were like, no, 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 no. Something is not right here. Now, one thing about South Africans and X, former Twitter, South Africans know how to dig. I believe in my heart of hearts that the CIA or the FBI headquarters lives in South African Twitter, I am telling you, because South Africans started digging. Like, wait a minute, who is this person? And then it came out that actually she is uh, of a Nigerian father, and then in her social media platforms, she had two flags, one Nigerian and the other one Mozambican, which got South Africans uh, eyebrows raising like, wait a minute, if you say you are a South African and one of the most proud uh, pri uh, tribes in South Africa, the Zulu nation, and you don't put a South African flag. And the worst part is she doesn't even speak a word of Zulu. Now that got people like, whoa, something is not right here. What is it? And then of course, you know, once there is a Nigerian involved there, South Africans are already suspicious because uh, in South Africa, most scams uh, in South Africa are perpetuated by Nigerian people. Not only uh, they are scammers, not all of them. I must be very clear on that one. Not all of them because there are Nigerians that do legitimate business and they contribute positively into the South African economy. The ones that I'm talking about are the ones that have no skills where they come from, no education, qualifications or whatsoever, flew uh, to South Africa to come and commit either cyber crimes or one crime or another. Also selling white powder as we call it here in South Africa. And uh, we were like, wait a minute, who is this person, uh, Chidima's father? They started looking into him, going as far back as where he comes from. And then they discovered that he has no education uh, background or qualifications or skills that is contributing positively into the South African economy. So clearly he is in South Africa committing crimes. Okay, fine. Let's look at the mother. Now, Chidema was going through it with South Africans online, through it. And some people even accuse South Africans of uh, bullying her, others when they also discover that indeed she's not a South African, which I'm going to get to, she's not actually a South African citizen. That's when they threw in the word xenophobic, a black child and all that stuff. 
and then South Africans are like, no, <laughs> just because you're black doesn't mean that you're supposed to come into our country and breaking our laws and then impose yourself and want to be our Miss South Africa. Because our Miss South Africa, whether she's black, white, colored, Indian, or even South African Chinese, as she is going to be representing the identity of South Africa and in our diversity as she goes out into the world. That is what South Africans will say. But when we're going to have an imposter, there's no way we're going to sit back and relax. So the Department of Home Affairs, which is, I think you guys call it home, home office or something like that, started doing investigations. Basically, in South Africa, when a child is born, that child's birth is registered. Files are kept in the archives. I believe now they are digitalized. So what did the, the Minister of Home Affairs do? He started doing what you would call field work, meaning he went to the hospital that it's claimed that she was born at. Born at. They, they claim that Chidima was born in Soweto in the biggest hospital on the African continent called Baraguanet Hospital. It's in Soweto. So they went there, looked for her birth registration, none existed none existed and secondly they claim that chidima grew up or part of her life she grew up in pimville which is a section of soweto and nobody in pimville soweto knows her or ever seen her there is no records of her ever going to her first school in soweto or anywhere else then in her bio she says she uh she's from cape town this is where she grew up and she's currently doing llb this is a law degree here in south africa in uh she said at first at the university of cape town later on we found out actually it's uh in a private college called uh what is it called again city college or something like that that's where she's doing her llb but in her miss south africa profile she says she was going to the university of cape town already you can tell that lies are being told if you are listening to our investigations as south africans and then the minister continued to dig a little bit deeper into her identity because in south africa when you are born you are given a birth certificate that birth certificate generates an id number when once you turn 16 when you go to home affairs to get your id number for the first i mean your id for your first time then you are going to be given an id number so this is where everything started re uh, un uh, unraveling for chidima turns out that Chidima's mother, who is a Mozambican born, never a South African, never was a Zulu person, and never lived in Soweto. And turns out that she used to be a mule for the white powder in Lesotho. Now, when the Lesotho uh, government was looking for her, she ran away to South Africa in the early 2000s, around 2000 or the year 2000. And in 2001, she met this particular Nigerian man, have had a child with her, with her, which is Chidima today. And then Chidima, then it was discovered that her mother stole a South African women's identity document. Now, in South Africa, if you don't have an identity document, you are as good as dead or non-existent because you can't do anything. You don't benefit anything from South Africa and South African government, you name it, you just, you're non-existent. Together with the children that you are going to bear because they need to be on your ID, or your ID number for them to get registered as South African citizens, as well as uh, going to school, opening bank accounts, getting a job, going to college, you getting married, even when they actually pass on Without an identity document, you can never be issued with a death certificate, etc. and so on. So it turns out that indeed, her uh, Chidima's mother stole another woman, a South African woman's identity document. And then in 2001, when she gave birth to Chidima, then of course, under that fraudulent identity, Chidima then became a South African citizen. So all of that was revealed. And then the woman who uh, identity was stolen from her for the t past 23 years, she's been suffering as a non-existent person in her own country.
Somehow, somehow, the investigation shows that she did get help at some stage in her life, but a lot of damage has been caused in her life, which also included her proceeding with her, uh, her studies, uh, uh, becoming a professional and stuff like that, including her child. In fact, two children. Now, the problem then it was presented to South Africans and to Chidima herself and the mother is like, listen, your mom committed fraud in 2001 when, we, when you were born. You are not a South African citizen. And therefore, uh, there were political parties as well that got themselves involved and thought if she doesn't withdraw from the pageant, they are basically going to uh, court to have her withdraw from the competition. Subsequently, about two days before Miss South Africa pageant uh, took place, she withdrew from the, uh, from the pageant. And then she wrote a statement that to this very day, it misrepresents the people of South Africa. Instead of telling the truth that she was served with court papers to withdraw from the competition, now that it's been discovered that she's not a South African citizen, and one of the requirements in order for you to contest in Miss South Africa, you have to be a South African citizen. Now that she discovers she's not a South African citizen, she writes a withdrawal letter where she says, uh, she's withdrawing because she wants to protect her family from imminent danger, meaning that South Africans are dangerous. So if she doesn't withdraw, South Africans are going to do something to her family, which is absolutely rubbish. She withdrew because she was served with papers together with Miss South Africa pageant itself. And I believe that it was Miss South Africa pageant that actually told her withdraw. Write whatever you need to write, but withdraw because Miss South Africa pageant needs to uphold its reputation, its legacy, as well as its, um, what do you call this, reputation on the global stage. Because you already know that Miss South Africa pageant has produced the best of the best contestants where two of them has won Miss uh, Universe uh, under this banner. But as far back in the 1950s, uh, they've also had another Miss Universe. So they don't want to destroy that reputation at all. So they had to ask her to withdraw. And she did withdraw. And when she did withdraw, guess what she did? Not only she did that, Nigeria, because now they discovered that one of their own is, uh, they say, we were bullying her. They invited her to contest for Miss Universe Nigeria, which she subsequently won and everybody was like, oh, come on, she's going to win this because it's now designed for her or it's positioned for her to win because of all the clout that comes with her. So for them, it was just business. I mean, you, no one is surprised about that. So now she is Miss Universe Nigeria going to contest for Miss Universe in Mexico City in November. But anyways, this is what actually started everything in South Africa. Now, everybody started saying, wait a minute, Chidima is not the only one that is a South African citizen. There are a lot of people whose identity documents have been stolen. A lot of young people started creating videos or posting videos about their current situation without an identity uh, document. They can't write they seen the final senior year examination. They can't also uh, register to college. They can't register for student loans. They can't do anything because they don't have an identity because their identity, it is stolen by somebody who's not a South African national, but came to South Africa illegally and then stole the South African's identity. And now they hold that identity and posing as a South African citizen and benefiting on all the things, privileges, rights that South Africans enjoy, they are enjoying, but the real South African is suffering as a result. So then South Africans are like, oh, where are, uh, something needs to be done. And that's when uh, we pushed our government. You got to do something because you're gonna come back to us wanting votes in the next two years. In the next two years, we are actually going to the local government elections and uh, of course, these political parties that are that formed into what we call a government of national unity (GNU) uh, post the twenty uh, the twenty ninth May elections this year. Nobody won the elections, including the ANC, so they had to form some kind of a coalition. And now 
this particular government is listening to the people of South Africa, including the Minister of Home Affairs. The Minister of Home Affairs really uh, uh, took this one and ran with it because the first thing that he said he's going to introduce is a di digitalization of home affairs using our biometrics. So that means if you're a South African citizen, your fingerprints and all that biometrics information is in the system of home affairs. Now we're going to get rid of a certain identity document would i have it's a green barcoded id i forgot to just bring it for you so that i can show you it's being phased out because this is exactly what foreign nationals want so that they can steal it and then they uh it becomes theirs and you become a foreigner in your own country type of situation with no rights no privileges whatsoever and uh, the, then now the, the second move that the Department of Home Affairs or the minister did was to overhaul our immigration laws. Now, it's a good thing that our immigration laws have been overhauled because for the longest time, there are ambiguities within our immigration laws that many foreign nationals have used against the Department of Home Affairs by taking the Home Affairs Department to court and losing in court because of these ambiguities. So our new Minister of Home Affairs, who happens to be Dr. Leon Schreiber, is of the Democratic Alliance political party, and he's taken this, like I said, uh, and, and ran with it. And so now, right now, as I speak to you, they are phasing out this particular identity uh, document, it's a green barcoded ID, into a smart card. The smart card will have absolutely everything. It will become your ID, it also becomes your bank, uh, what do you call this, your bank ATM card. It's basically going to be everything in that small little thing. Your entire life is going to be there and it's going to also be difficult to corrupt it or to to uh to steal it from a south african because inside of that card my biometrics are there and then if you steal it from me and then you try uh to use it elsewhere it's going to uh, what do you call this uh, what's the word i'm looking for it's going to indicate that this is not your identity uh document and that's how you will get arrested now let's talk about uh what else do i want to talk about yeah, the, the anger of South Africans. South Africans are still very much angry because there are a lot of things that we are discovering. South Africans are still, to this very day, being called xenophobic simply because South Africans want to clean the country of the, the, the rot that has been going on for years. And now South Africans are beginning to ask this question. What has the African National Congress been doing for the past 30 years since in power? Because the rot that is being discovered on a daily basis, it leaves you asking yourself, wow, we've been living in a crime scene for the past 30 years. We have people who are not supposed to be here in South Africa and claiming rights and privileges that do not belong to them. Now, who are those people that I'm talking about? I'm talking about Bangladeshis. I mean, Bangladesh is in Asia. Pakistan is in Asia. What are they doing here in South Africa? They come to South Africa and guess what they do in South Africa? They, um, they, they open businesses. Now, there's a business in South Africa called a tuck shop. So basically, it's like a makeshift uh, supermarket that you build inside your, your yard in the townships. Uh, you sell basically uh, convenient uh, food stuff. Instead of a person taking a taxi, going to a mall, even though there are malls now within our townships, but sometimes you have to take a taxi to go to this particular mall versus a tax shop that is literally a hundred steps away from your house. Now, these uh, tax shops is a South African concept. And uh, the reason why we created these sort of businesses is because the apartheid government didn't allow us to go into town to go and buy in shops like pick and pay checkers and stuff like that but instead what we would do is uh during the time when black people were allowed to go into town for specific uh, um, uh time they would buy in bulk and come back into the township and then resell those foodstuff to 
uh, the, the communities and that is called a spaza shop. Now, when the Bangladeshis, the Pakistanis, Ethiopians and Somalis came to South Africa illegally, I must emphasize on that, illegally, and I'm going to uh, tell you why I'm saying they came into South Africa illegally. They saw this uh, business concept and then they hijacked it from South Africans. They started competing with South African spaza shop owners or tax shop owners. And then how did they do that? South African tax shop will sell an item at a certain price and then they will come and lower the price drastically where now south africans instead of going to a south african uh spaza shop owner they would rather go to the foreign uh shop okay south africans didn't say anything they kept quiet why because we have ubuntu and then the south african that runs that tuck shop who was running it probably since their great grandfather now that shop dies and then the foreign national shop will then rise South Africans didn't say anything. We continue to support them. We even gone as far as referring to them as my friend. If you come to South Africa and then uh, we go to a spaza shop or tax shop, spaza shop, tax shop is the same thing. It's just I'm interchanging them. And we call them my friend and they became very, very comfortable. Now let's come back to why I said they entered South Africa illegally. According to our immigration laws, in order for you to come to South Africa, you need to apply for a visa, right? Just like everybody that has come to South Africa, if you are watching the video, you came to South Africa on a certain visa. In most cases, it's going to be a visitor's visa. So all these guys, the Pakistanis, the Nigerians, the, uh, the Bangladeshis, Somalians, Ethiopians, uh, everybody that is not a South African citizen, they came here, they came on a visitor's visa. Now tell me why now Bangladeshis and Pakistanis, Ethiopians and Somalis, uh, when they get to South Africa and their visitor's visa expires, they suddenly now declare themselves as refugees or asylum seekers. Now, where it becomes illegal for them, we need to look at the Geneva Convention of 1951, which states that a refugee and asylum seeker, the first safe country to flee to is the next door uh, country. Now you tell me, how are you a refugee or asylum seeker flying so many hours from Asia to South Africa? How are you a refugee or asylum seeker flying four hours from Ethiopia and or Somalia to South Africa because the next or the first safe country uh, for Somalis and Ethiopians it's Kenya but they come directly to South Africa those are not refugees those are not asylum seekers those are economic migrants and they are stipulated in our immigration laws and then when you come to South Africa as a an immigrant you are not allowed to open a business of any sort and if you do desire to open a business in South Africa and you are non-South African, our immigration law says you need to have invested at least 250,000 US dollars. That is 5 million rand in South African money. But no, when they realize that, oh no, this is hitting us, they go to NGOs. There are NGOs in South Africa that are funded by the West. And their job is to challenge anything that gives South Africans their right and privileges to exercise and enjoy. But they, uh, they, they, they take these NGOs, hire these powerful lawyers with big monies and take South Africans to court. And in most cases, South Africans lose these cases because our constitution itself is very ambiguous. For example, if you look at our constitution, which of course when it was drafted, it did not anticipate this. Because there are words that they use against us in the court of law, such as anyone or everyone, instead of South African or South Africans or citizens. Like how your constitution will say, American or British or Canadian or citizen of Canada or US, whatever the case might be.
but not our constitution. Our constitution uses words such as, for example, everyone has the right to. Everyone has the right to. Now, let me give you the biggest, best example that is in our constitution about South Africa. It says, South Africa belongs to those who live in it. So meaning that if you flew from the United States on a visitor's visa and you landed in South Africa and you were given 90 days upon entry and then you stay in South Africa until your 90 days lapse, you can simply say, well, I have a right because South Africa belongs to me and why it belongs to me because I live in South Africa. And if South Africa wants to deport, you can run to court and then the court will say, yeah, the constitution says South Africa belongs to him too. So that's how we've been losing this battle and more and more and more Pakistanis and more Bangladeshis, more Somalis, more Ethiopians, more Nigerians, more Zimbabweans, more uh, Congolese and everybody else on the African continent is here in South Africa because they call each other. Come, come. We, nobody's going to touch us. The constitution of this country is so stupid together with its people that we can actually use it in their own courts and we win the battle and that's what they've been doing south africans have become so sick and so and tired they are calling for the amendment of the constitution to stipulate clearly that citizen or south african that way everyone else gets cut out however if you are in south africa legally then you are going to enjoy the privileges and the rights that South Africans enjoy until the time you leave the shores of South Africa. I hope I'm making sense with everything that I'm saying. And so they're starting with the immigration laws. They overhauled it. And now in the overhauling of the immigration laws, now the Department of Home Affairs is also looking into visas. Now, the biggest visas they are looking into is work visa, they also are going to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, refine the digital nomad visa as well. I can't remember. There are three visas they are focusing on so that it cuts out all these illegals that are trying to come to South Africa and using our laws against uh, the Department of Home Affairs, which ends up legalizing people that are, they are not supposed to be legalized, just like the Bangladeshis, the Pakistanis, the Ethiopians and Somalis, who say they are here on, as refugees and asylum seekers when Pakistan should go to India because that's the next, the first safe country according to the Geneva Convention of 1951. Pakistan, same thing, India, same thing with Bangladesh, India. But no, they are here in Africa. Now, the problem once these guys get to South Africa, you must also understand that if you look back in history, before the transatlantic slave trade uh, started, the biggest slave drivers in on the African continent were the Arabs. It's a fact. It's true. You cannot run away from it. They see black people less than human beings. Now, these Bangladeshis and the Pakistanis together with the Somalis, who, by the way, in case you did not know, they don't consider themselves Africans together with Ethiopians. They say they are not Africans. And they are adamant about that, that they are not Africans. And the irony of that, they are in South Africa, an African country. And then, just about last week, six children died because of the shops that they've opened and they've gone as far as mimicking the foods that South Africans buy like bread that will now create their own fake bread. I don't know what they put in it. And what they do is they go into dustbins like trash cans and then they will take out um, popular bread brand uh, packaging. They will go clean it and then they will put these breads inside there pretending as if they ordered them from those big brands that we grew up with like Albany, Sasko, uh, what else am I leaving behind? Basically, those big bread brands, they take those plastic put and they put the rubbish in it. Now, six kids have died from food poisoning because these puzzle shops as well, they are not well kept. So they will, you'll find rats in there and then they will take a, uh, a pesticides and then they will spread it all over the floor and the same floor, this is where 
if i showed you videos you are going to throw up in fact i'm going to throw some videos towards the end so you get to see what i am talking about including purified water from the toilet they are selling it to black people you know why because they don't see us as human beings imagine you flew hours and hours and hours from asia to south africa to feed the people of south africa basically shit basically shit and then you turn around when south africans stand up and you call us xenophobic six kids are dead and when we are saying no 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 those kids are not going to lie in their graves for nothing we are called xenophobic even some south africans the so-called afro what do you call this pan-africanists they are throwing the word afrophobia at south africans so that is why i personally and i did say it in my previous video i have packed my uh pan-africanism mentality because it's being weaponized against the people of south africa because we are called xenophobic by them and afrophobic words that never existed in our vocabulary before we didn't even know such words existed all because we are defending our sovereignty and also the children of this country and also people who don't see us as human beings but they see us less than these are so-called africans the same so-called africans who are saying we are not africans like what, what what's going on what are we supposed to do in a situation like that what are we supposed to do so now um just to finish off what i'm trying to say here uh it, it also looks to us that the government is afraid of the ngos they kind of like treating everything with kid, kid glove uh, they keep showing raids at restaurants and 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 all these places and i did share with you guys way before all of this is happening that most rest in fact not most all restaurants in south africa the ones when you visit this country the waiters that come and serve you, they're not South African citizens because they are being exploited simply because they don't have legal rights to complain as opposed to South Africans. So now they're being raided, they're getting arrested. All of those uh, illegal foreigners that are waiting are waiters in these restaurants. And uh, of course, they are also being checked for compliance. It turns out we've been eating rubbish because we sit in those chairs waiting for our food that are being brought from the kitchen to us. The conditions in those kitchens will shock the living daylight out of you. Why? Because they were not complying. And yet South African government has inspectors and one has to ask himself, what has these inspectors been doing? Because it's their jobs to visit these restaurants to see that compliance is being adhered to then we discover that they are taking bribes from restaurant owners also not only that uh these waiters that uh that are being exploited with it it was also discovered which is something i've already said as well that they only get paid through tips that you give them but also the tips that you give them certain amount is deducted from them imagine there's no basic uh salary Secondly, the, uh, the tips that they rely on, the restaurant owner still takes a cut out of that. Literally, when they go home, they take absolutely nothing. Whether they are South African or non-South African, now the government is like, no, 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 no. In South Africa, we have a law, minimum wage. And now these restaurants have to pay in millions of rands to these illegal foreigners that have been working for them uh in terms of uif which is unemployment insurance fund as well as um the tips that they've been robbing them of but they're no longer allowed to come and work in the restaurants because our current immigration laws are talking about scarce skills if you are going to come to south africa looking for a job it must be a job or a skill that is rare in south africa or scare in is it a scar sorry scarce in south africa and that's when you will get a job restaurant work domestic work and all of that is not scarce skills 
So now this is now driving out many illegal foreigners that have been coming to South Africa because they'll be looking for work in these particular um, markets. And now this they're saying it's only reserved for South Africans because South Africans, they uh, come with rights and those rights need to be respected as well as adhered to by every business in South Africa. One thing that I also forgot to mention earlier is that if you are a non-South African and you open a business in South Africa, not only must you have 5 million Rand uh, in, uh, in your bank account, but you must also, once you've opened that business, 60% of your workforce must be South African citizens. But this is not happening. None of these guys are doing that at all. Instead, they will go back to their home country and bring their uncle, they bring their small uh, nephew. And it's always men, always men that are so-called refugees and asylum seekers, no women. That's another thing that we've discovered. And we're like, wait a minute, why are all these asylum seekers and refugees only men? Whether they're coming from Somalia, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, or Pakistan, including Nigeria, Zimbabwe, you name them. It's always men. Not just any men, but young men. These are the people who are supposed to be staying behind in their own countries and fixing their countries. But no, they are running away to South Africa. Because in South Africa, it's a freeway. Because of our laws that work against the people of South Africa. Uh, and then uh, the last one, if you look at the Zimbabweans, Zimbabweans, they, they, they created a what you would call a self-inflicted a self injury when they kicked out people out of their country, basically white people out of their country. Now they are here and they want us to do the same thing. They're trying to control us and our identity, our diversity. They are threatening our diversity, our identity as well as the rainbow nation that we have created for ourselves they want us south africans to kick out white people and we're like no they some of them may be rotten and racist but they are still south african citizens and we took a godly path of forgiveness we basically took god's creation itself which is love and forgiveness and that is why they are here and we are not going to do that and white South Africans, if they contest for Miss South Africa and they actually meet the standards of the competition, they are going to win. Whether some people like it or not, like, oh, is, is there a shortage of uh, beautiful black girls? There's plenty. But if they don't meet the standard of the competition, why must you just because they're black, we must be corrupt and then make them win? It's not going to be like that at all. We respect principles, values, as well as just honesty. If a white girl did what is required, then she deserves to win. The recently Miss World South Africa is a yet another white girl. Oh, some people almost lost their shit. And we're like, but did you watch the competition to understand how she won? And the black girls that actually were competing, they flopped. So you are saying, let's take the black girl who flopped uh because she's black and she's in a black country the former miss south africa is a black girl a doctor a medical doctor black medical doctor the former one and if you look at the competition where she won she outdone all the other contestants including the whites the indians and the coloreds and other black girls but no because south africa is a black country only black people must win we are a rainbow nation. We are not like your country and we will never be like your country. We are unique like that and we like it that way. And nobody is going to try and control us and tell us how we need to live our lives. That we've been living without the spotlight shown on South Africa for years. I mean, decades already. So, oh, yo, South Africans, they got this slave mentality. Fine. If that's how you see us, cool. We have no problem with that. We know who we are. We know who we are. And we are fixing our problems. We are not running away. I can challenge you right now as you're watching my, my video to go around your block and find me a South African that is bothering you, breaking your laws, disrespecting you, calling you lazy, and all these sort of names that they call you, some of the African people that come and run away to your countries. 
you're not going to find even one South African doing that. Because we mind our own business and we adhere to your rules and the rule of law of your country. That's what we do. That's what we are taught here. We take our Ubuntu with us everywhere we go to. Uh, probably the last thing that I want to say is going back to opening a business in South Africa. Like I said, if you want to open a business as a non-South African, you need to have $250,000 in your bank account or 5 million rand when it's converted. Register the company, hire 60% of your workforce must be South Africans. And uh, what's the last thing? Uh, pay taxes. And if you are indeed a refugee and asylum seeker, that you are exempted from that requirement. You can, you can open a business, but your business must not be so big that it graduates you from a refugee or asylum seeker into an economic migrant. Because if your business starts making hundreds of thousands of rands in revenue, then you're no longer an, uh, a refugee or an asylum seeker. Now you've graduated into economic uh, migrant and therefore you need to meet those standards, including the visa. Yeah. You're no longer a refugee or asylum seeker. You are now an economic migrant. And now you need to adhere to the visa rules where you need to apply. Go back to your uh, country of origin. Apply for a business visa. <coughs> I'm so sorry. You have to go and apply for a business visa. And a decision is going to be made if you meet all the criteria of uh, coming and opening a business in South Africa. So basically... In a nutshell, that is what is happening in South Africa right now. Just yesterday, the six children were buried. They had a mass funeral for those uh, children. They raged between the ages of four to about seven years old. They ate something from a Pakistani talk shop. And that uh, thing that they ate was laced with uh, rat pe uh, pesticides. And unfortunately, those children died. And uh, so South Africans are basically kicking out every foreign national that is running a tuck shop in the township. And of course, you know how we are being labeled. Nobody cares about those six kids, but they only care about the foreign nationals that are illegally in South Africa. And we are being called xenophobic, Afrophobic, and all of those words that we no longer care about anymore. Back in the day, you could shut us up, literally shut us up by calling us xenophobic because we don't want to be seen to be so. Why? Because we believe that we, we are kind. We exercise Ubuntu, but it's been taken uh, for granted and we are realizing that maybe our Ubuntu is our enemy. And we probably need to now start withdrawing it. And I'm not saying we need to do that, but there's a discussion going on among South Africans that we need to stop it. It's the one that's putting us in trouble. I hope we never get to stop it because we are a warm, welcoming nation. We love people coming into our country because we understand that when you come to our country, it's not only for leisure, but also to, I don't know, to lift off some weight on your shoulder from your countries. And then we just want to make it easier and soothe you out before you leave back to your country of origin. If you want to live in South Africa, we welcome you. Of course, we embrace you. We, we, uh, we make sure that you become part of us. It doesn't matter what race you are. As long as you come to South Africa with good intentions. So we're busy cleaning, busy cleaning, mass deportations are taking place. Uh, as a black person, you may be like, what? They're deporting black people away from a black country? Hey, what happened to black? Uh, nah, we, they've shown their hand that they don't care about South Africans and they don't care about South Africa. They don't care about the rule of law. So what are we supposed to do? Just because they're black, we must not, um, what do you call that, kick them out just because they are black people? No, there are borders. Until those borders have been removed, then you have to adhere to the immigration laws of South Africa, whether one likes it or not. Because, yeah, let me just put it within Africa. Because some people are saying, you can't be a foreigner, as a, you cannot be African and a foreigner in the African continent. Yeah, the, 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 there are still those lines. Whether you like it or not, they are there. 
and those laws must be adhered to. Breaking the law is not something legal to do. It's illegal. It's a crime. So we are not going to promote and support crime, unfortunately, especially from people who hate us. I, I don't understand people that still come to South Africa, yet they hate us. And some of them have gotten so comfortable that they now are rude. They're offensive. They swear at us. They call us all kinds of names. And I don't understand when are they going to get it through them that we don't care what they say to us. We absolutely don't care. They try to guilt trip us by having white people in our country. They will always be here. And if those white people perpetuate um, crimes against black people, they'll be thrown in jail. Many of them are currently rotting in jail today because they thought they are superior to black people. They are, they are rotting in jail. So we hold people accountable. We hold ourselves accountable and we hold our leaders accountable. I will go back and circulate uh, from where I started. South Africans have long patience. We take very long to get angry, but once we get there to the point of where we break, there's no stopping us. And right now, this is where we are at. So if you are watching the news about South Africa, just know that is what is going on. South Africans have taken enough of abuse, have taken enough of ad taken advantage of, and we've had enough of the lives that we keep losing of our children because of people that treat us less than human beings. Like I said, if I showed you the videos of the things that they do, that they feed us in the name of business, you'll be shocked. You probably will throw, will throw up. The videos that I'm going to show you, there's one video I'm going to start with. And every time I come here, I'm going to keep dropping videos to show you what we are fighting in our country. And I advise you, do not eat anything or drink anything, especially drink anything before you watch this video. Or if you watch the video, I don't know, maybe put it aside until you, you have uh, digested the food in your belly. Otherwise, you're going to throw up. This is exactly what is happening to us in this country. So other than that, guys, that's the update that I have for you. And I'm sure I'm going to have more uh, coming through. And those of you that are traveling to South Africa, guys, I lost my phone. And if you've been texting me, I'm sorry. I'm not responding to emails or anything like that because I don't have a phone right now. Um, I've been trying to save up, but the money that I'm getting, I need to do other things with it, unfortunately. So I don't have a phone. I don't know how to uh, get hold of you or anything like that um, until I get a phone. Until I get a phone, and then we'll go back to communicating. I know there uh, the are probably six families that have moved to South Africa, African-American family that have moved. And I promise that we are going to meet, have lunch and all of that. Guys, if you're already here in South Africa and you're trying to contact me, unfortunately, I don't have a phone currently and uh, things are a little bit tough. Please do super thank this channel as well if you can. Uh, or I leave my PayPal in the description below. This is not a, a habit of mine of asking. I, as you guys already know, I'm terrified to ask for money. But I will leave the link of my PayPal in case you have some kind of sympathy for me. Or super thank the channel. I will highly appreciate that so I can get myself a cheap phone but a smart one so that I can receive emails and things like that. Guys, I need to uh, cut this video right here. I hope we understand each other. There'll be more uh, updates, like I said, uh, coming from me. And uh, let's see each other, guys, in my next video. Please do not leave the video without liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And once you subscribe, please click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so, so, so much, guys, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Eh, <laughs> 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 Uh, that we think it's purified. 
coming from the toilet. What the hell is this thing? What the hell is this thing? In a tax shop. What the hell is this thing? This is the water that they are selling for the people in the name of purified water. And they are selling to the communities. Our communities are just eating or drinking water that is coming from the toilet. These people. It is clear that we must get people from health to come and see this thing. Once again, I'm taking you through this water that is coming from the toilet. It is going like that from the toilet. Here are the filters. But the source of the water is the toilet. Filth. Our people are being made to drink filth. That is coming from the toilet. This cannot be tolerated. Really, it cannot.